today is going to be the first in a series, a mini series if you like, of a way that I turn eccentric goblets. Um, it's not a definitive guide, it is just the method that I use and have used for a number of years now and I find it works for me. Um, I'm going to cover in the series uh, different ways of actually mounting the blank and the effects that has on the way that the eccentricity looks. And I'm going to start today with the preparation of the blank, in other words, putting the blank into the chuck or whatever holding method we do in the future, and practicing eccentric turning to give you an insight into the results you achieve with certain movements of the blank um, off-center and indeed the presentation of the various tools, mainly a spindle gouge and a skew chisel, to achieve the eccentric knuckles as I call them. So that's what today is going to be about and then as the series progresses we'll go through more detailed work if you like to help you achieve the look you're looking for. Eccentric goblets are a bit of a marmite item as we call them over here in the UK. You either love them or you hate them. I love them, they're a great challenge, you can get some really nice results. I hope you can come along and enjoy it as well. So when I do any practicing of any sort I just use what I call scrap wood. Here's a bit of a fence post, I've just cut down on the van saw. Um, I can practice my heart's content with that. I can turn it down to a toothpick and nothing has been lost. When I do any practice of anything, my skew chisel, etc., I always use what I call a scrap bit of softwood. And if you get a nice finish, for example, with the skew chisel, when you're practicing your planing cuts, etc., it means you've got, the good, you've got good tool control because softwood is obviously more difficult to get a good surface off the tool. Okay, so we'll go over to the lathe and we'll start off with practicing eccentric turn. So, chucked up in my medium grip of jaws, you can use various profiles of jaws. I just happen to like these because they're ribbed and they grip well. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is to find the f jaw number one, and I've already got a mark. A little mark there and just mark where it is seated on the jaw and this means then that we're going to get very close when we put it back onto central axis and you will notice the absence of a bowl part of the goblet this exercise and this practice is not about hollowing or turning the style of a bowl it's purely for the off-center turning and to get used to to the results you get with certain tool cuts as I explained in the introduction. So we're going to imagine that there's a bowl here. Yes I can hear you shout just like Coventry and you kiss. Yes I know. <laughs> anyway so what we'll do now is just take the parting tool and again I stress this is soft wood um, from a fence post. We're not looking at finish we're just looking at the results we get with regards to shape. So the surface might not be nice, it doesn't matter, that's not the important thing. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is just turn a stem. Okay, that's all we need to do. So, we've got the bowl there, this is the first um, the stem that comes from the bowl. Now, if we just make a, uh, a nice sweep to the base of that stem, one more pass, that'll do. So that is now going to um, define the shape of the top of the first and knuckle. Now comes the offset situation. You loosen the jaws, hold the, the blank towards the jaws, and then drop it by whatever amount you feel comfortable with doing to begin with. Let's just do it to there. Okay. And Tighten the jaws up well. Now you've got it 
off center. Now again, when you bring the tool rest up, make sure that you are free from snagging before you turn the lathe on. So now we're just going to go down. Now remember, you, you're cutting air, nice light cut, but firm. Now if we stop there, you can see what's actually happening. Well, we're starting to form the knuckle shape. I mean, it's determined by the angle of this surface here, but we're starting to form it here. So if we go back a bit further and go in again, stop. And this is the whole idea of practicing is stopping to see what you're achieving. And bearing in mind that we're going to be using the parting tool again to form the next stem. Now, we'll go in a little bit more. Okay, that's quite good. Now, if we take the parting tool and you see what this is doing is giving us a little bit of room to work with as well with the tools. Okay, now we've got the second stem. Now bearing in mind that that stem is going to be offset. This is the centre here. Now that looks a bit clunky there, doesn't it? Uh, forget the size of it, that doesn't matter at the moment. It looks a bit clunky. We want to bring it in to the stem on the underside. There are several ways of doing that. I quite like using the skew. So we'll just nibble away at that going towards the stem. And you can see now this is becoming a bit of a nicer shape. But we want to bring that round a bit as well. Now be mindful that you've only got this piece to um, support it. So you could take your 3 8 um, spindle gouge and just very gently start to nibble away from the edge. Again, in carefully with the parting tool. The situation now is that we've got this knuckle as we want it, let's say. So now we're going to be putting it back on um, central axis again, but we have to sweep this part of the blank into the stem, like we have here, uh, while we're on this axis and then when we go back to the central axis you'll see the effect that that will create similar to this up here. The point to note here is when you're uh, doing this always be very mindful. You're rubbing the bevel obviously, you're going down the right hand part of the flute doesn't catch that knuckle. I've had many fly off for that reason, so always be very mindful of the, um, the gap that you have between your tool and the off-center piece. Okay, so let's just say that's okay. 
So now we've got the profile of the the next knuckle. So now it's time to put it back on the central axis again and find the mark. Support bearing in mind you would have the bowl part here, which we will be doing in a future video. Pressing towards the chuck and just getting it back in the same position it was initially. Tighten up a little bit and see how straight that is. Needs a little bit of alteration. You can normally feel the marks from the jaws and that just needs to go over here ever so slightly. I think that's pretty good. I think. Yeah, that's fine. A little bit of playing around to get it right. Or as near right as you can get it. So now we're back on central axis. I'm not going to go through finishing and everything on this one. As I say, this is purely the, the off-center. Getting used to off-center bit. Okay, so again with the 10 mil gouge, or half inch spindle gouge, we can start to form <coughs> the, the knuckle. Let's not take it down too far at the moment because we haven't quite got this down to size yet. So again, using, you can go to the 3 8 spindle gauge now if you like. Making sure you get a nice start to the cut. Ride the bevel. And bring it towards the stem. Nice clean cut there, Little trip out there, doesn't really matter. I want to get it smaller, so I'll keep chipping at that. A little bit more. Yeah, it's nearly there. Um, one more pass. So really that wraps up this first video. All I was trying all I'm trying to do is to show you the very basic method of off-center turning. You can see the results that you get with the tool presentation and how to clean things up. I mean, it's not perfect, but as I say, it's a practice session to get the feel of it. Uh, and in the next video, we'll go into more detail of how to alter the shape of the knuckle and not make them look so blocky. Um, and indeed, uh, the designs that I take into account when I'm doing an eccentric goblet. So I hope it's been of some use to you and of some interest and again hope you go away and start practicing um, and it'll give you something to start from. That's the whole idea of this first video. Well thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.